Today I'd like to read you the Virgin Color Tree House. I will continue with Chapter 7. Watch your language, Andy, said Harry. There might be children reading. I don't care who is reading. I said, put your sea monkey eggs in that water right now, or else I swear I shall solve that jar onto your head so hard that it will be stuck on there for the rest of your life. How would you like that? Terry thought about it for a moment. What it would be like to live the rest of my life with a jar on my head, brushing teeth, eating dinner, hair styling, stupid jar, nose picking, <coughs> wedding day, you may kiss the buried, ha ha, one, two, three. You may kiss the bride. Old Terry, old edge. Fart. Stupid job. Very old Terry. Bad time. Stupid job. The end. Dead Terry, stupid job. Old Andy crying. I don't think I'd like it at all, he said finally. I guess under the... I guess under the circumstances, we can skip the water water purify step and add the eggs straight away. Great thinking, I said. Terry's hand was trembling as he poured the sea monkey eggs into the jar. He he stirred it and held it up to the light. I've done it, he shouted. I'm a genius. I've I've created life. He was right. Not about being a genius, of course, but there was definitely a bunch of hatched sea monkeys bobbly around in the jar. Well, that's, that's great, I said. Now can we get back to our book? Not yet, said Terry. I have to feed them one little scoop of, of official sea monkey growth food I I groaned. Does that mean that now you have to build a one-level scoop of official sea monkey growth food food dispensing machine? No need for that. They come with their own official sea monkey growth food dispensing dispensing utensil. Said Terry, as he sprinkled sea monkey gross food for a plastic spoon into the top of the jar. The food juggled a feeding freezy. Well, in one sea monkey at last, least. It swam straight to it and sucked it all up before the others could get any. What a guts, said Terry. Better put some more in, I said. Terry measured out another spoonful and sprinkled it into the jar. Once again, the greedy sea monkey ate it all. And then it started to go. Within seconds, it doubled. It doubled in size, and then doubled in size again. 
Then it swam around the jar and ate all the other sea monkeys. It grew bigger and bigger and bigger. It's getting too big for the jar, said Terry. Get a breaker, I said. A really big breaker. Terry, Terry darted away and returned with the biggest breaker we had. That ought, that ought to, to hold it, he said. Yes, he tripped the sea monkey from the jar into his new home. But the sea monkey kept right on going. Soon it was too big for the breaker. So we tripped it into a bucket. But it quickly outgrew that as well. It's no use. Said Terry, we need something even bigger. How about the bath? I said. I didn't know we had a bath, said Terry. Yes, I said. I've been meaning to talk to you about that. It's in the bathroom. I didn't know we had a bathroom, said Terry. Just bring the bucket and follow me, I said. That, that is one weird-looking sea monkey, I said, when we'd finally got it into the bath. That's because I'm not a sea monkey, said the weird-looking sea monkey. I am a mermaid. A mermaid, said Terry, looking like he was going about to cry. But mermaids are for girls. I ordered sea monkeys. That's not my fault, said the mermaid. The eggs must have got mixed up at the factory. My name is Mermaidia. How? What's yours? Terry, he said. That's a nice name for a merman, said the mermaidia. I'm, I'm not a merman, said Terry. Oh, I thought you were," said Mamadia, grazing at Terry. "You're, you're certainly good looking enough to be one." Terry blushed and giggled. "Hello," I said. "I'm Andy." "Uh huh," said Mamadia, not taking her eyes off Terry. "I live here too," I said. "Uh huh," said. Mamadia, why don't you run alone now, Standy? Terry and I would like to be alone. Yes, said Terry dreamily. But what about our book? I said. When are we going to do that? But it was no use. No, either of them were listening to me. They were just gazing into each other's eyes. It was quiet. It was quite embarrassing, actually. I stepped out of the room and closed the door. The The thing was, I, the thing was, so I could still hear what they are saying. You are so sweet," said Mamadia. "I wish I could stay here with you, but you can't, can't you?" said Terry. "Alas, no," said Mamadia. "I can't live in a bathtub forever." We've got a swimming pool," said Terry. "It's see-through. You could live there, but I need to live in the sea," said Mamadia. "It's where I belong." "Oh," said Terry sadly. "I know," said Mamadia. 
Why don't you come to live with me? We could live in the thirty-story sand castle under the sea. Fish outside of dream. It is it real or ex? That would be nice," said Terry. "But I'm not a merman. I can't breathe under water." There is a way through," said Mermaidia. When a human and a mermaid get married, the human becomes a merman, and all we have to do to be married is kiss, kiss. We should have rust in and broken. It upright then and there, but I didn't want them to know I'd be listening. And besides, I was too late anyway. I, I shouted as I he heard the um. I heard the unmistakable sound of a human and a mermaid kissing. Oh, darling," groaned Mermaid. "I'm so happy. Let's leave right away." Okay," said Terry. "I've just got to say goodbye to Andy." "All right, but hurry," signed Mermaid. Signed Mermaid impatiently. I don't know how much longer I can stay. I can last in this bath water. I quickly hide as Terry came out of the bathroom. He climbed down the ladder and started looking for me.